Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our culinary medicine webinar series. My name is Jessica Van Root. I am the executive chef at the UCI Susan Samueli Integrative Health Institute. Before we start, I want to review a few Zoom housekeeping items. We are recording this session. After the session, we will post this webinar on our website along with the recipes to download. Everyone will remain mute to limit distractions during the presentation. After the presentations, we will moderate a Q&A session from the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Please take advantage of the Q&A feature to address questions to our panelists. The Samueli Institute Culinary Health Webinar Series is a workshop based on the UCI School of Medicine Culinary Medicine Curriculum. Each class is led by a UCI Health Sci-High provider and pro includes a demonstration from me based on a relevant daily meal plan. Our previously recorded classes, presentations, and recipes are available. For more information, please visit ssihi.uci. Edu. Today, we have the pleasure of hearing from where's Teresa? Teresa Nutt. Teresa is the Director of Health and Wellness Coaching at UCI. She was the co-director and teaching faculty at University of Minnesota's Integrative Health and Wellbeing Coaching Program, where she taught a number of courses in seven years. She received a bachelor's in nursing from Viterbo University in La Crosse, Wisconsin, and a master's in human development from St. Mary's University in Minneapolis, Minnesota. She has a two-year degree in personal coaching from Coach U, now called Coach University. She has served on several boards dedicated to coaching over the past seven years. Teresa has been a nurse since 1995 in a variety of settings, including inpatient, cardiac, oncology, medical units, hospice, Public health, public health, and school nursing. Please join me in welcoming Teresa. Thank you, Chef Jess. I feel so important. What an oh. introduction. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna share my screen here. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be with you today. We're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics. Is it one of yours? Spring cleaning, but let's look at it a little differently, shall we? So we're going to talk about spring cleaning from a holistic perspective, because that's how we think about it here at the Samueli Institute. So join me on a journey. And by the way, if you happen to have a notebook nearby or something you can write on, this is like we want you to participate. You're going to get more out of it. So grab a notebook and a pen. A little about me, though, Jess did a great job. I'm the Director of Health and Wellness Coaching. I see patients here in the clinic two days a week, and I also teach our Integrative Health and Wellness Coaching Program and do other innovative projects within healthcare, which makes my heart sing. Um, and yes, as noted on the bottom, I'm all about meaning and purpose. It might be my stage in life, but I just know that people who have meaning and purpose do better, so I'm all about it. So we don't want to get too talky, but let's start with just this picture for a minute. What do you see when you look at it? I think this is how most people move through their life. At mock speed, never really paying attention, not really aware of what's happening. And when we don't slow down, we just keep doing the same things day in and day out. And that affects how we feel and what we're capable of doing. So we're going to slow you down for a little spring cleaning today. So what do I mean by holistic spring cleaning? We're going to just do some pausing and reflecting, which is why I asked you to grab a notebook. And let's start with, you know, if you were outside standing on your front porch and you were just going to sweep off the dirt and dust, it's the light spring cleaning, right? You're not, you're not going through the cabinets at this point. We're just doing the light spring cleaning. So let's start there. Think about in your life, what's really working for you? What's really, oh, when I do this, I feel amazing, or I really love this. It gives me energy. It gives me joy. Note that. Take just a second and write those things down. We often don't pause to think about what's really working, what's really working for us.
All right, just to keep it moving, you can come back to this later. Then think about the flip side. What are you doing that really isn't working? I always tell my clients to think about like the things that make you feel like someone took the air out of your balloon. That's what we're looking for here. So is there anything obvious that really takes the air out of your balloon? What isn't working that you're spending your time doing? Jot it down. All right. And again, we're just going to keep moving, but keep taking notes if you've got some ideas on your on the top of your mind. The last question I want to ask you is one that takes a little more pondering. This is a little deeper reflection. We're still just sweeping, but it takes a second longer. What do you really want your health and your life for? What's it really all about for you? Like, what are those things that really matter to you? And I hear it every day. I'm going to give some examples. I hear it every day in my office. Things like people say, oh, you know, I really want to be able to be active with my grandkids and, you know, like get down on the floor with them and crawl around or, you know, do things outside with them. Or I really want to travel to Italy and see ABC. Okay, that's what you want your life and your health for. So those are the kind of things we're looking for. What is it you really want? As Mary Oliver would say, what do you want from this one wild and whatever life? I can't think of the second word, but it's a great, great ending to one of her poems. So this is the light spring cleaning. We're going to keep moving. If you're still sweeping, you know, keep on going. No need to stop now. So now, so now we are going to like dig into a closet or a cabinet and do a little deeper cleaning. So I'm just preparing you like maybe you need to sit down if you're not, you know, this might take a second longer. So we want to shift gears to really getting nitty gritty about life and looking in every nook and cranny, our relationships, what we're learning, our career, our spiritual practices, our leisure activities, our lifestyle choices like movement, nutrition, et cetera, our community, our finances, and our living environment. And what I want you to do when you look at each is see what's fueling you in each of these areas. So just do a quick round robin, jot down some notes, and let's just identify, hey, what's really working here? in each of these areas. This is the fun part. So while you're thinking about what's fueling you, the idea is we want to do more of that. We often do a lot of things out of obligation, and there are some obligations we cannot do anything about. But it is interesting to me over and over again when people come in for lifestyle support, how they're just spending a lot of their time doing things that don't do a lot for them and they don't even realize it. So this is an opportunity to clean it up a little bit. So I'm gonna keep moving, but again, you can always come back to this. What's really fueling you in every area of your life? These are the things you wanna do more of. All right, here's my balloon picture. I promised I would use that metaphor again because it's the one that people can so easily relate to. So look in those same areas, your relationships, what you're learning, your career, your spiritual practices, what you do for fun, leisure activities, physical lifestyle choices, community finances and environment, and find those things that are just sucking your energy dry. That's it. We're just kind of looking in all the nooks and crannies for the things that maybe aren't as energizing or fulfilling for you and write them down, write them down. Even if, I wanna say, write them down, even if right now your brain is telling you, well, I gotta do that thing. It's really important to so-and-so or such and such or my relationship with ABC or XYZ. That's okay, no big deal, still write it down. It's just your brain protecting you. We're gonna play with it in a minute. So while you're doing your little inventory, I'm gonna just say, one of the interesting things about drainers is that we often do them out of obligation. And 
sometimes we can't change the obligation, but we can change how we do the obligation. So maybe you've got to do that thing and you don't love it, but could you do something like play good music on the way to it or do it with someone you really enjoy spending time with? So we can look at ways to make it less draining if it's something we truly need to keep. And other times, much like the story that's been passed down for a long time now among speakers everywhere, is this, this idea of the, the daughter who makes the ham at a holiday and puts it in and, you know, cuts off the ends and all of these things and recognizes not until that moment that the only reason she does it that way is because someone in her past generations of her family had a smaller pan, so they had to do it that way. <laughs> but it's not necessarily what she needs to do now. So we're just looking for any wiggle room around the things that maybe are draining you and that maybe you have to do, but could possibly do differently. All right, this is one of my favorite exercises, maybe because I like magic a little bit. I don't know if you're the same way, but I'm kind of a like, I love fairies and unicorns and magic. It's just really fun. Harry Potter movies made me Wahoo loved him. So you just have to know that about me. But this is an opportunity for you to get out a magic wand, whether, well, you know, whatever you want it to look like, it's all yours. And really say, if I can wave my magic wand, what do I want my health for? A year from now, what could be different? What matters to me? What really matters? And maybe not everything that matters because you don't want an exhaustive list. No one can keep up with that. But what are those key things that really matter the most to you? And here's a really big question. One of my favorite, what does your most inspiring life look like? Just really let yourself imagine. So for a minute, I want you to just wave your wand, get really excited and write down a few thoughts. Key ideas here. We're going for a, you know, a quick moving process. Hope you have a great magic wand. I can imagine some really fun ones out there. All right, while you're waving your wand and jotting down your most inspiring life, I'm going to keep moving, but don't quit what you're doing. So we're at the point of this process where you kind of put it all together. And I call this painting the picture. It's like, okay, now I have all the little pieces and parts. I did my light spring cleaning, what's working and what's not, and what I really want my health for. Then I did the deep dive, my drainers and fuelers. Then I waved my magic wand. So you've got all these little tidbits of information you've been gathering. So paint yourself a picture. What does it all look like? Pull all the pieces together and kind of draw a picture of what your life could look like if you were making conscious choices in your day the ones that really, really work for you. Paint a picture just for you, any way you want. So I'm gonna give you a minute just to pull those pieces together. And it could just be going back through your list and circling and highlighting the really important things you wanna come back to. Any way you do it is right, can't do it wrong. All right, we're gonna keep moving. So here's the thing, how many of you, I'm just asking you to sit with this question for a minute. It's true for me. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm in this bucket too. How many of us have these great ideas for what would make a difference in our life? And they stay there in our head and we never take any action. Anyone can relate to that at all? <laughs> so I want to talk about why the little choices can make such a big difference and how you can start moving forward today. We'll start with a little research about the power of lifestyle. So this was a great little uh, research piece by Harvard Health about healthy lifestyle, five keys to living a longer life. Anyone want to live a longer, healthier life? I hear people craving longevity all the time when they come in. So on average, people will live 14 years longer if they attend to their lifestyle. That's worth noting. Here are the five key choices you can be paying attention to. Because I think sometimes we try to do it all and then we get overwhelmed and then we do zero, nothing. But look at this, it's diet. You know, let's eat some good foods, which is why we have Chef Jess. It's getting some movement. 
It can be all kinds of things. And one of the things I'm just going to quickly say is people often think it has to be a certain kind of movement, like I have to go to the gym. No, find what you're really going to do. If that's walking, if that's dancing, if it's, I don't care what it is, bicycling, just do that thing. Avoid smoking. It's hard on so many parts of our body. Minimize alcohol. Notice it doesn't say none. So we're not the alcohol police. But the less alcohol, again, so much better on your organs. And then maintaining a healthy body weight because that maintains your joints and helps all your systems work well. So I just wanted to hit on this quick little piece of research like, hey, we can boil it down to these key things to pay attention to. But I want to add one more. Because I know for a fact, in all of my years of being a nurse, in all of my years of being a coach, in all of my years just sitting with people and working with people, people who have a sense of meaning and purpose, they do better and they feel better. And look at this, the research supports it. So I wasn't making that up. I'm glad to know I wasn't making it up all these years. They tend to make healthier lifestyle choices. When you feel on purpose, you're going to do things that feed that sense of purpose and meaning. They manage their stress better, so they're more resilient. Whatever life throws their way, they handle it better. They sleep better. They have better mental health. Higher levels of brain function and cognitive ability. So all of these things, hey, these sound pretty good, don't they? These are the reasons why having a sense of meaning and purpose are so important. And everyone's going to have a different one. So for some people, it can feel like, oh, what does my purpose even mean? And I want to just start by saying, it does not have to be the job you do. It doesn't even have to be that you do anything different about how you spend your time. It might just be how you do the things you already do. I've had moms who say, hey, I love being a full-time mom. Can you do it differently? So it brings you more joy and meaning and purpose. And there are always things we can tweak. So don't just get stuck in the idea that it's got to be like this thing I do that's my work or my volunteering in the community. Those are options, but they're not the whole picture. Here are some ways if you're not sure what your purpose is. For me, this has been driving me for a long time. <laughs> I've been a pioneer in my passion fields for more than 20 years. So for me, it's a little different. Uh, one last thing I want to say before I hit some of these is your purpose can change. So just know that. So look at some of these choices for how you can do it. You can try different interests or spend time with different people, volunteer, notice what lights you up or comes naturally. Ask others like, hey, what do you think is my purpose? Notice what annoys or frustrates you. Sometimes what we want to change is part of our purpose. Ask yourself why you make the choices you do. Do you love the environment? Do you want to support um, small business, whatever it is, just start asking some questions. So you can identify your purpose, I promise. So I'm going to leave you with an invitation as we come to a close with this part of it. And that is, where can you start? So I gave you a lot today. Hopefully you started to paint your picture and maybe you go back and do it and finish painting your picture. But where can you start? What's one small step you can take? And then go from there. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Hold on. Okay, so we are going to be making three dishes if we have time today, actually. I threw in one extra one. Bear with me. Sorry, everyone. It almost worked. We almost had it. It turned off on its own. So can everyone hear? Everyone can hear. Okay, good. So I came up with, I'm going to explain these recipes that we did while I'm waiting for the system. There we go. 
Teresa was very interested in learning how to make truffles. Truffles aren't necessarily healthy. And so I had to come up with um, a recipe that was slightly healthier than most, but I find it very interesting. Um, so we're gonna go and we're gonna make a truffle. And then we're also going to be doing a Gruyere cheese bite. The reason I chose these recipes is because it is kind of like spring cleaning. These are products that you might have lying around your house and you have absolutely no idea what to do with, including cocoa powder, nuts, canned beans. And so my goal today is to just show you how you can sometimes use some of those products around your house to help kind of clean up. All right. Content. Okay, so we're going to get started. Sorry for all the movement. All right, you're going to see me from there. I don't know why that other camera is not working right now. I'm going to do it this way. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to get started first. I'm going to show you the truffles because the truffles are probably the easiest ones to make. Now, cocoa powder. In the past, I have talked about cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is great just because it doesn't have any sugar in it and it tastes like chocolate. But there's a product out there called raw cacao. This is the difference. Cocoa powder is a processed product versus raw cacao, which is not. Raw cacao has not been heated. And so cocoa powder is heated raw cacao. So if you eat the raw stuff, you get more fiber, you get all the antioxidants that you would naturally assume you get from chocolate. So if you eat it in that raw form, it's better. Whenever we cook with cocoa powder, though, we usually heat it up. We're baking it, we're adding hot milk to it, we're doing other things to it to take, and it takes away that health component. This is a recipe where you're not even gonna heat up the cocoa powder. So you could use raw cacao in this recipe and you would get the full benefits of it because of it. We made this for our med students the other day and they ate them up like crazy. So it takes a little bit of patience. So I'm gonna show you. Cocoa powder does not like to mix with liquids. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla for flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of almond milk, oat milk, whatever kind of milk you like. You can even use whole milk. And then a sweetener. So we're using maple syrup. Um, you can use date syrup. You can use pretty much any syrup that you want. Oops. Now, this is the hard part, mixing it together. Um, the cocoa powder does not like to absorb the liquid immediately. It needs a little bit of work. So you want to keep kind of stirring it and working with it until it comes together. Now, when you make this, you can think of all the fun things that you can roll your truffles in, um, dip them in but this will actually be your middle truffle piece. If you see, I'm just working at it slowly and then it'll start absorbing it. I don't want you to add any extra liquid in there because it won't form correctly if you add any more. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna take this and put it in the refrigerator actually for about 20, 30 minutes. It'll finish up absorbing all that extra cocoa powder so that you can form your truffles. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator. I had some ready. And so that's what it looks like when it comes out. I have some walnuts, some coconut, and some extra cocoa powder. So you can use anything, you can use, you don't even have to use nuts. Um, I was thinking chia seeds might be good too. I love chia seeds on everything I feel like. I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna just take a little spoonful and roll it. 
And surprisingly, they stay round and perfect, almost better than truffles do. If you've ever had to work with chocolate, chocolate, and melt it, melt it down for our truffles, it's really hard because you can break your chocolate or seize your chocolate, and then it doesn't taste good or it looks bad and it's not shiny. Well, the beauty of this is you really can't mess it up. And you can even put like, um, you could stuff these. You could put like a dried blueberry inside or some fresh strawberries inside. You can go to town with these. And you can make them whatever size you want to. Perfect. So I have more, but I'm just gonna show you. So you just take a little container and then just roll it around. Woo! Right inside. And because it's sticky from the little bit of um, syrup that you have and the liquid, it'll pick it up. Just like that. Or you can do cocoa powder. Just roll it around. And then you've got a beautiful truffle ready to go too. They melt in your mouth like a regular truffle does. Um, I mean, they do still have sugar. You, do, you don't want too many of them, but at the same time, it's definitely a lot healthier than the stuff you might be buying out. You might want to chop up the nuts a little bit more. That's it. I just changed my life. Go. <laughs> cool. Now we're going to move on, and I'm going to make your Gruyere and pear bite. So we love using. Um, I'm going to move my computer. We love using puff pastry or in the kitchen. We love using things like puff pastry or other pre-made doughs. Puff pastry is made with layers of fat in between. We're gonna be using phyllo and phyllo is a little bit different. Phyllo does not have any fat in it and we get to add the fat. So you get the same idea like puff pastry, only you don't get a puff to it, you get a crunch to it instead. So phyllo is what you use to make baklava, um, but I'm gonna show you different ways of using it because when you buy it, you end up with too much. And you never know what to do with it. You can put it in your freezer, it's fine, but I'm gonna show you what you can make. So when you buy the phyllo, usually comes in two, two kind of tubes or rounds of it. And then you've got these nice sheets. I already cut part of this, so. And they are flimsy, they tear. You feel like this is never gonna work. How do I, well, I'm gonna tell you something. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of phyllo. Because we're gonna take layers upon layers to create a crunch for us. So I have, let me see, I have five sheets here. And watch, as I pick it up, it's gonna tear. And all that is, is because when it melted or when it was defrosting, there was just parts that it got stuck to, but there's nothing wrong with that. Just try to separate it as best you can. Don't stress over it. This is all fun. And see, even this one is a little bit torn. But that's okay, but I'm gonna start now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my extra sheets to the side, grab a little bit of oil, and I'm not even gonna brush the whole thing. If you watch what I'm doing, I'm just tapping on one section, okay? Just a little bit. Because I'm gonna do this with multiple sheets, so I don't have to brush it fully with oil. I'm gonna flip that over and let it stick to it so it's like glue. I can see the areas where I might not have as much oil now. So I can go back in there now and brush. The areas that you put oil in are going to be the areas that are going to be crunchy. So think of it that way. You'll want a little bit of it, but if you add too much of it too, it might end up being soggy. So I'm just going to stack that one on top. 
It's almost like the messier this looks, the more crunch you get. Do a little bit more. And this sheet was on top of itself there. Okay. So that's all glued down, ready to go. That looks good to me. I can see the oil through, but I've, I've still got parts that might not have much oil. You can use butter too. You don't have to use oil. Um, I just like the neutral taste of it. So now let's get cutting. I have a silicone, silicone, silicone sheet here, a uh, baking tray. It helps to have this just because then I don't have to grease this. If I use the aluminum or other types, it might stick. So I like using the silicone for this. And now I'm just gonna cut them into squares. So I usually do this into, I'm gonna do this a little weirder. You, you'll have the instructions, but I wanna show you how you can make smaller ones, that's why. So I'm gonna cut it into thirds. And then each piece I'm going to also cut into thirds. Now I'm going to take each one and just push it into the middle of the cup. You can buy these pre-made. I just want to show you how easy it is to make and how you can fill this with anything you want. So you can go to town with filling it um, cheeses, salads. You don't even need to uh, bake it again. I'm going to do a double bake on these, but you don't need to. You can use them as a vessel to serve anything in. And if you think about it, it's just something crunchy. There's not much flavor to it. It's just carrying the food for you. So then it goes into the oven, 375 for about 10, 8 to 10 minutes. And then when they come out, they're a little golden brown and you can literally pick them up just like that with your hand. And they'll, they're a little cup. So you can fill this with whatever. We're gonna fill it and then rebake it. If you want to, you can even make little mini ones. So you can just make the pieces a little bit smaller and you can also push them into here and then you can bake them again too. So for this, we're going to do pear and uh, pear, gruyere, and walnuts. So walnuts first. I am going to do a chop on them. Can you see if you can zoom in this camera in? That one. Sorry, we're going to see if we can zoom this camera in. Let's see. Mm. Let's see. No, not that one. Let's see. Mm. <laughs> nope. Never mind. Did it? There we go. Can you see that better? Yes. There we go. All right. Okay. Walnuts knife remember pinch the blade put your fingers around the outside this hand i want you to always tuck your thumb underneath and pull all your fingers for it so you have a claw that way when you're chopping you're not going to chop your fingers so i'm just going to rock back and forth chopping nuts like this is really 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 important for you to keep your claw because we tend to think that we're just chopping away and then this hand just goes like this all of a sudden and that's when we cut ourselves. If you keep your eyes on the knife and your hand, you will not cut yourself. So we're doing a really nice fine chop. Think about all the different types of nuts you could add in here. Pecan would be amazing. Um, cashews. Really anything you have on hand would work. Scrape with the back of the knife. Okay, I'm going to put that to the side. And then I have pears. 
So if you haven't heard, Dr. William Lee will be our keynote speaker at Women's Wellness Day. And he has a great book that has Eat to Beat Diet. Let me just show everyone. This is the book, Eat to Beat Diet. Oh, you can kind of see it. Anyway, he has a list of different, there different items inside his book that are beneficial for you to in, add into your diet to help your metabolism. One of them being pears. Pears are incredibly high in fiber. And so they're a great addition. And we're going to add them into something savory. Pears, because I, I don't find pears to be as sweet as apples, they tend to be able to be added into savory dishes. And so if you don't feel like you eat fruit, what you could do is you could add it into something savory and then you would get, be getting the benefits of the fruit as well. The most important thing though, keep the skin on. So this is a Dianju and this is a Bosque. Bosques don't, don't soften very easily. So if you want this to be, have a little bit of a bite to it or a little bit of a crunch, go for this guy. If you want a soft pear, so if you want to bite into this, dish and you wanted just a little bit of the crunch from the walnut but a smooth kind of texture you would use this guy the more yellow or the green one you can use the asian pears too just different flavors um when you're buying pears this is the part that you press to see if it's soft or ready to go so around the neck don't press too hard because you will damage it but once it gives a little you're ready to eat it okay you can peel it, eat it with the peel on, um, especially if it's organic. So we're gonna do a small dice for this. I'm gonna cut through the middle and then I'm gonna cut again. And then I'm gonna use the tip of my knife and make a little V just to take out that seed. And I'm gonna trim off the edges and I'm gonna slice. And dice. And again. So because this pear is a little bit softer too, it's a lot easier to cut if you're worried about your knife skills. Another fun way of adding this would be to grate it. You could like grate it like the cheese. Completely up to you. It's a fun dish and um, great for the holidays. Something you can make ahead of time too, because you could serve this at room temperature or you could serve it warm. All right. So what goes the best with pears and walnuts? Time. So we are lucky enough to have our own little um, garden outside. So we have fresh time that I grow. If you have a recipe that is a stew or a saute, and it says one teaspoon of thyme leaves, and you've got enough liquid in there, just put the whole thing in. The leaves will fall off and you can remove the stem. You don't need to actually take all the leaves off. They fall off. Now, if you're doing a dish like this where you can't, you can get a strainer. So I have a very large strainer. So this is one of those cheap, large strainers from Daiso. You can pull it through like needle and thread. So you just pull your thyme, through, like if you were yep, putting a needle through and you can go in now and actually pick up the time. So now I've got about a quarter teaspoon here ready to go. I'm gonna mix that all up. Oh, it didn't go through. Or you can also just grab a sprig or two. And whichever way it's growing, you just pull the opposite direction and that's it. Thyme grows very, very easily here in California. I would say oregano and thyme are a lot easier to grow than basil um, is. So if you like thyme, 
Definitely have it around. I feel like it brightens up a lot of dishes. So does oregano, but oregano kind of overpowers, whereas thyme is just like a nice little light flavor. Okay, Gruyere cheese. You can use any cheese. The harder the cheese, um, the stronger the flavor, so the less you need to use. I'm gonna mix that all up with our walnuts. My dad was actually telling me a really funny story today as I'm looking at the walnuts. In, um, in Asia, they have a hard time drinking milks. And so they do a lot of different off-brand milks or like nut milks and things like that. And one of the things that they sell as being healthy is walnut milk because the walnut looks like a brain. So, it, so that's a selling point because a walnut looks like a brain. If you drink it, it's supposed to be healthy. Just fun info. It's not, I, I don't know if there's any scientific proof behind that. It's just something they do. All right. so. We're gonna now take our cups and fill it with our pear, cheese, walnut, and thyme. And I have my oven ready to go, and I'm gonna bake it for about eight minutes. And I will show you what it looks like as soon as they come out. Nice. Chef Jess, while you're doing that, we had a question from the audience. And saying, one last what? bonus dish, just because we have the time for it. And it's super quick and easy. And it's very, these are the cups that I just put in and I made. So those are what they look like afterwards. I'm gonna show you a really quick spring pea dip. Um, we often have frozen veggies and frozen veggies are great. Peas being one that we always end up having because we never use the whole bag. I find like peas are the one thing we never finish using. Edamame, I use all the edamame, but I've got a great pea dip and it's a spring pea dip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one can of cannellini beans. If you've heard me talk about aquafaba before, it's the liquid that's left over from canned beans. You can use garbanzo beans, but cannellinis, these white beans, actually have an even stronger aquafaba than garbanzo beans. So if you're interested in making like egg white products that aren't egg white, try the cannellini beans or the white beans instead. Frozen peas that I blanched and are ready to go. I've got fresh mint. So we grow mint outside. You can use whatever mint you have. Um, and you can even use basil. The whole idea is that you're using what you have on hand. You want an herb, some kind of a bean, and then something green. So it could be spinach, it doesn't have to be peas. But the white beans will really make it creamy. Now here's the fun part of this dish. I roasted shallots and garlic in, in, in more oil than we're gonna add in there. The whole idea being that now I can use this oil for other sautés, salad dressings, and things like that. So I'm using up things that I have lying around the house to repurpose for something else. So I've got two shallots in here. I'm gonna use both shallots. Oops. And when you roast things, just to let you know, the flavor diminishes, like the flavor is not as strong. So you use more. I'm gonna add my two shallots, two French shallots. And then I have two heads of garlic. I'm gonna save two, I'm not gonna add both, but I'm gonna add one and I'm just gonna squeeze the cloves out. The whole head. Just like that. And then a little bit of lemon juice. finish it all off. And then I'm going to drizzle in about a quarter cup of oil just to thin it out.
And there you've got a beautiful string key dip, creamy. It's got all your nice fresh herbs inside and then it's brightened with that little bit of lemon juice. So there you go. I'm sure, let's see, do we have questions? Let's see. Hmm, okay. Amber's got a hold. Okay, what's a nice fruit that also pairs with Gruyere? Teresa, what do you think? You're from the Midwest, what would you say? Well, I'm from the Midwest, but I don't oh, eat cheese. You're muted. No, you're not Am muted, I'm muted, sorry. Okay, no worries. All right, I was gonna say, Jess, you're asking someone uh, who doesn't eat cheese. I can't do cheese, so I'm, I'm not your normal Midwesterner. This is a good question. Okay, so let me say, for the cheese, I would suggest um, any kind of stone fruit. So you could even do peaches and pear, uh, peaches and pluots, plums, those types would also be really good inside too. Oh, the, they were asking about Dr. William Lee. Teresa, are you going to try to make these uh, truffles now? I can't wait. Okay, good. I was trying to tell you before, I'm like, you just changed my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> finishing truffles is hard. And you said that. I'm like, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> Dipping them is not fun at all. You lose half of them in the dip, I feel like. So um, truffles are not easy. But good chocolate is really is really good. And so if we can get it in a healthier form, then definitely we should. Any other questions? Well, ending a little early maybe, but let me see what our Gruyere looks like. So if you look, there we go. So if you look at our Gruyere bites, this way there we go the cheese is melted and then you can wait for the pears to even roast off a little bit more but then right before serving it what I would suggest you do is you take a little bit of honey and you just do a little drizzle just like that it'll help give it more flavor and it'll pop that flavor of the cheese and the pears together so just do a little bit. And if you think about it, there was nothing else. I didn't add any salt in here. Everything is from the um, cheese and just that little bit of pear and honey, just like that. Well, we'll hang out if you want to ask any more questions, we will be here let us know but next month um we will be having a presentation with our new registered dietitian michelle lujan and we will be talking about other fun there we go diabetes and diet and even if you don't have diabetes you can you can still come yes it's very important we're going to be making a summer soup with pesto. If you don't know what that is, it's a French kind of uh, a French herb sauce that goes on top. And then we're also going to be doing a massaged kale salad. So if you've never learned how to massage your kale, we will teach you how to massage your kale next month. <laughs> an important skill. It's an yes, important, important. Skill. very, very important skill. <laughs> I did just want to, if I can make a quick mention that there are, uh, I believe there are only five tickets left for the Women's Wellness Day for the in-person. So just like if you're wanting to do that um, all day dedicated to women event, get your tickets now because they're going fast and there are some um, live stream options, but not all of the presentations will be available. So just wanted to just remind people, and it's coming up, what, May 5th, so really soon, yep. sooner than we realize. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Thank you, everyone. All right. Camber, are we good? Yeah, we're good. Yay. Thank you, everyone, for coming and hope to see you next month. Bye.